All right, hello everybody. I am here to introduce myself to the vinyl community. I decided after a while of watching so many videos online that I would go ahead and jump on board this vinyl community train and start doing some videos myself. My name is Jeff McCormack. I have uh, been a music collector most all of my life, but have recently gotten back into vinyl uh, about this time last year, or a little earlier than uh, last summer. Have started acquiring about a record player and started getting some vinyl. I don't have a ton, but I probably have, uh, according to Discogs, I guess about 300 pieces right now. But I figured, ah, it's a good start uh, as we uh, continue to share things that I get in the future. Um, like I said, uh, I've been collecting music since the mm, late 70s, I guess. I think back, the first band that I ever bought an album by was Kiss. That was my first uh, discovery of albums. Um, I bought Kiss Love Gun, I'm assuming somewhere probably late 77, maybe early 78, because I also recall that before buying that, a Live 2 had come out, and it came out in 77 too. Um, I was introduced to that, basically my older brother uh, had a friend, and um, I remember popping in their room once, and they were listening to Kiss Alive 1, and I remember we were reading the little letters that were inside the gatefold edition of that. That's about all that it made sense to me. Um, and then it was a little later that another uh, high, uh, uh, school friend, their older sister, had Kiss Alive too, And we actually pulled it out to make fun of it. We uh, kind of made fun of Shock Me by Ace Frehley because just his voice was so weird. There. So we were like little kids like, Ugh. at the time I guess I was 11, um, maybe 12. And we just made fun of the fact that it sounded kind of weird. Um, but for some reason, that kind of stuck with me. So I ran out and uh, had some money, I guess, and went out and had my brother's help, my older brother's help, and we went out and got uh, Kiss Love Gun. And I remember coming home and my brother spending time teaching me who their names were while he sat around, he's somewhat of an artist, and sat around and drew the picture from the front of the album. Um, prior to that, m most of the music I had were 45s and singles. And I was big time into things of the day, which would have been more like disco. Um, had a lot of uh, the Bee Gees, you know, Saturday Night Fever was big at the time. Grease was big at the time. I loved the movie Grease. Used to have all the singles from all of that. I never had the actual album, but had the singles. Um, and I used to have this little, one of those little portable record players that was like a tote type thing. And then you pop the top off and then had a little table and you put it there and you put the records and then a little speaker came out. A little cheesy thing from the 70s. But um, And I used to carry that around with my 45s and play it on the front porch and play it around my friends. So um, my love for music had already started there. Um, I do remember at one point one of my friends bought me a 45 um, for my birthday and I didn't know who the band was. It was this weird band called the Rolling Stones. <laughs> now I guess at the time they were obviously very popular. I had no clue who they were. I was into the Bee Gees and stuff. Um, Andy Gibb and all that kind of stuff from that time frame. Um, it was uh, you know later that as I got into Kiss and stuff that I started learning of uh, rock and roll and, and, and hard rock. The, um, it was pretty much Kiss. My first, it was pretty much Kiss for the next couple of years. My very first concert that I went to personally, not one that my parents drug me to, um, that I went to personally, my first concert was Kiss, and it was a Dynasty tour, uh, which would have been around uh, 79. I believe it was like July, somewhere around the July 4th weekend. It was actually the show... I believe a day or two after the one from Maryland that go, is on video that goes around floating around out there, uh, I've seen. Anyway, um, went to the show early, like noon, sat outside like a good fan, uh, did all the chant at the door, one, two, three, four, you know, all that stuff. As a little kid, my brother was, had taken me with me. Because here I am, I'm, you know, literally 13 years old. Anyway, from there, it just blossomed. Um, I started getting into pretty much anything with hair, bandanas, makeup. So yeah, I went through the whole phase there. Anything along that lines, I started getting into. Actually, right after Kiss, the very next band that I discovered was Van Halen. And uh, they just blew it open even more. Then you start finding Def Leppard, Rat, all the bands, Motley Crue, all the bands from the early 80s. Um, I became a full-fledged you know, hair metal head. At the time, it was just metal. It wasn't, uh, you know, glam or anything. It was just metal. Judas Priest, all that. So I still typically, of course, 
am old school and that's kind of my love. I do uh, have some love for modern stuff. I pretty much zoned out everything in the 90s. I don't have any desire. I think at the 90s, when the 90s rolled through, I turned my attention to European metal because metal was still popular there. So aside from listening to the older stuff and the bands of the older days who continued through the 90s, I turned my attention to bands overseas and started getting into some of that along that lines. Um, so that kept my you know metal interest al alive. Uh, still like a lot of that metal now. I do listen to some new metal. I do listen to... Uh, I say new metal, not new metal like '90s new metal, but I mean I you know listen to some of that stuff. Um, the uh, I listen to some heavier stuff. I don't get much into death metal. Some extreme I like thrash. Some of the extreme metal is okay, but in small doses. I would say for the most part, I am still a melodic, traditional metalhead. Um, basically, I got out of vinyl collecting back when everybody got out of vinyl collecting as far as you know when cds became real popular i think i um sold a big box of my vinyl and got rid of all of it somewhere in the early 90s at that point just turned to cds i probably have i don't know how many thousands of cds i have a bunch of them here and then out of my shed is literally a thousand or more out there um the uh i have a diverse range of styles that I like. Um, I also have uh, two sides. All the music in the shed that I have is what I would call just your typical, um, I would use the term secular, because all of the stuff I got in here would be Christian rock, Christian hard rock. Um, very, grew up very involved in the church. I have still maintained that. All through the 80s was big involved in the, in the Christian rock movement. Uh, wrote for some magazines. Still write for Christian rock magazine so I still get a lot of CDs and stuff for that and so I have acquired a large collection of that though I admit now I've been selling off some of the CDs to return to buying the vinyl um, last year I sold off a bunch of old Christian demo tapes made a lot of money that I wasn't expecting to make for those and turned around and bought a record player and started buying vinyl so that kind of jump started me in there um, so I won't keep this very long um, I will say uh, I, I see people online and some people collect, you know, seven inches and stuff. I'm not a big seven inch person. I really stick to, to the full play, you know, anything 10, 12 inches. Um, not a big person that enjoys picture discs. They're pretty and they're collectible. Don't like the sound of them as much. So I don't have a lot of those. But we'll talk about things that I'm into on future videos. Um, let me see. I was looking at some of the questions that people answer. I didn't write down but a couple of them. Um, how many records I own, like I said, probably 300. Uh, first record, I've already talked about that. And I was about 11, 12 when I first collected. Recently, recent purchases, and I'm just going to share these and then we'd be done with this. Um, recent purchases are, I've actually got these the other day. Some of these you may be familiar with only because one of the other vinyl community uh, person, Scott Waters, if you're familiar with him, um, with uh, No Life to Metal. He did the artwork for these, but this is Christovox. Now, this is a reissue uh, on, on vinyl of a Christian band from the 90s, late 80s, early 90s they were around. And um, just got these vinyls in the other day. There's this one, as well as the first album. thing nice about these are they are on colored vinyl, so this is a pretty purple. You can see that the others are pretty red. Um, and then there's this, and it, this is another Christian one. Um, All for the King. The interesting story about this was, again, like I mentioned, uh, this is a Scandinavian band They're from overseas. They uh, sent me the audio tracks to review for the magazine I write for, and I reviewed it and just fell in love with it. And I said, man, I would love to hear this album on vinyl because I can imagine just the heaviness of the, the, the feel of the thickness of the songs would sound great. Um, of course, posted that online. The band saw it. They enjoyed my review, thanked me for it, and said, give me your address. We'll send you the vinyl. Got the vinyl in and uh, have loved it. Um, when I mentioned I have, have a diverse taste, uh, I figured I'd go ahead and pick out some of the stuff. People who know me as a metalhead, they're surprised to find out some of the stuff I listen to. This this is probably one of the, the strangest ones that uh, I grew up loving this, and anything he's touched, I pretty much listen to and buy anyway. And that is Adam Ant, or Adam and the Ants, or whatever. This is when I got into him, was this album here. 
Um, and I actually I picked this picked this up on vinyl just about I don't know, a month ago. Um, I have some of his other vinyl, but I found this one for a good price and really great condition. So yeah, you got this metal head that really gets into this. I also say I don't have any vinyl by them, but uh, I'm also big into like the Partridge Family. Um, I love that time frame. I guess it's going back to the 70s without being so disco. Um, <clears throat> the oddest album that I have, I think, in my collection at this point is this one. Lenny and Squiggy. <laughs> Lenny and the Squig Tones. Now, <clears throat> I'll tell you why I got this, aside from growing up with Laverne and Shirley. Um, for those of you who know, he's a singer for Spinal Tap. Went on to be that. I'm a big Spinal Tap fan. So I thought I just have to have this. It's, it's a silly comedy music album. The other reason is for the longest time, I was one of those people that was convinced. That's not what I'm looking for. One of those people that was convinced that this fella on the album was Peter Chris without makeup while he was in the Kiss time frame because this would have been out in that time frame. So looks a lot like him and a lot of people it's been argued on on the internet you know that that's Peter Chris. So I bought it because of that. Of course we've also got Nigel Tufno as we know from Spinal Tap. So this is Christopher Guest and so this is kind of like pre-Spinal Tap guys. Um, and then, you know, this being Peter Chris. Turns out it's not. I've seen pictures of this guy online. I forget his name, but he, it's not Peter Chris. But anyway, when I found this album, and I bought this album years ago from somebody online. Had no record player, nothing to play it on. Um, but it was just like, hey, nostalgic. I want to own that. So I bought that. Um, that's some of the weird stuff. Most of the stuff I got that I'll be sharing in future videos is probably pretty straightforward um, and more diverse diverge into some of the diverseness that I have. Anyway, that's about all for now. Well, the only other thing I'll share about you, and I'll put in a clip here uh, of that too. I'm a musician. I play drums. I haven't done a lot more th recently than playing in cover bands, but, you know, it's fun. You kind of uh, make a little money, do your chops. Um, used to play in the 80s and stuff in some bands that nobody's ever heard of. Never did anything majorly recorded. Um, 2005, about 2011 I played in a band that did record an album a band called Hemo Theory it were on Spotify and stuff it was that would be kind of considered new metal not necessarily my style but it was it was good stuff um, it would fall into more of a category of Christian you know it was in that time frame when Linkin Park was huge our singer was a big Linkin Park type fan and so we had that kind of a started off as kind of a rat rock feel later became a little more metallic you know new metal type feel um, and ultimately uh, disbanded Anyway, so that's my claim to fame, um, but I do play now in cover band and stuff, so I might just insert a little clip here of us just doing some cover stuff. Not long enough to get hit for copyright, but just to share. Anyway, again, thank you for watching. Love you if you would subscribe to my channel. I'm going to make this channel now all about my music. It's been about my music, but now it's going to be about vinyl. Maybe it'll be more than uh, the 20 subscribers we currently have. So. Anyway, thanks a lot, and hopefully you'll enjoy what I have to share.
Up. That's why. <laughs>